Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you again for joining us for another webinar from the Brain Aneurysm Foundation. My name is Aaron Cohen. I'm a neurosurgeon, and tonight we have our guest, Dr. Arvind Ahuja from Neurosurgery and Endovascular Associates of Milwaukee. He's a very busy neurosurgeon treating aneurysms both through endovascular and microsurgical techniques, and he has wealth of data regarding risk factors for intracranial aneurysms. I appreciate his time, and he will talk to us tonight about such risk factors. Arvin, please go ahead. Thank you for very much for taking the time, and thank you, Dr. Cohen, for very kind words. As we'll talk a little bit about cerebral aneurysm, as most of you already know, that cerebral aneurysm is a lot of dilatation of the blood vessels in the head. And this occurs because of the weakness of the vessel and increase the chance of rupture. As you notice with this diagram, Here's an internal carotid artery coming up that divides up into the middle cerebral artery and anterior cerebral artery, and right here is an anterior communicating artery aneurysm. That's the ballooning that you get formed that, that can rupture. A lot of people ask me about this normal loop. This is just a cavernous loop otherwise. This, most often the aneurysms occur where the blood vessel bifurcates into branches, one or two vessels at that time. Overall, there's about 500 cases of new aneurysms every year. More, most are discovered after the rupture. The natural history of unruptured ruptured and intracranial aneurysm leads to significant morbidity and mortality. The normal diagram that more, most people use for calculation that one third of the people will die at home. Another third people will get to the hospital and still die or have significant morbidity and only one third survive. And out of that one third that survive, only one third which is one ninth of the original group to start, will be back to normal in six months from the time they started. So early detection is, can be, make a significant difference. As discussed, the risk of rupture, eight out of nine have poor outcomes. With treatment prior to rupture, most often we would quote the morbidity mortality of less than 5%, depending on where the location is, the size of the aneurysm. And we discussed that a lot of the aneurysms, we don't really know what causes them, but there seems to be more and more incidents that occur in families. And there seems to be, which leads to that there's a genetic factor to cerebral aneurysm. Six to 20% of the incidents of aneurysms occurs in family members of patients initial with subarachnoid hemorrhage. Family members defined as two or more family members in first or second degree relationship such as the first degrees, of course, mother, father, brother, sisters, or, and sons and daughters. A second degree would be grandparents, aunt, uncle, niece, and nephew. As we discussed previously, and a lot of people have a lot of questions, when should they be screened if they're in this high risk with the family history of aneurysms? And we'll try to give some definite ideas what may be worthwhile. Look at the incidence of sibling. Especially in siblings, there's a 52% incidence in twins. So that means, and it turns out, it's amazingly, that if the one brother or sister had an aneurysm at age 45 or 50, the second one will have a rupture around the same time. So it's really the genetic factors seem to be very important, especially in twins, as you can imagine. Family aneurysms are different than aneurysms in general population. They tend to rupture at a younger age, the average age of 39.8 years, tend to be smaller when they rupture, less frequent in the anterior communicating artery area, and siblings and twins tend to occur in the same vessel or opposite vessels. So it's amazing that aneurysm occurs in the same area, ruptures faster, so there's clearly some genetic factor that causes the weakening of the blood vessel. Here was a Yale School study of medicine that looked at 20,000 patients, over 39 institutions in 10 countries. They found that five regions in the genomes have found to contribute to aneurysm development. They also looked at, you know, this explains about 10% of the genetic risk for having aneurysm, but 90% is still left discovered. So is there another genome? Is there another cultural factor, idiopathic factor or our, that affect that? 